Hello, my name is David Martin, and I look forward to introducing the FDA MyStudies mobile app system to you. The first thing that I should tell you about the MyStudies app is that you will not find it in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. The reason is that this is an open source product that you can make your own. A version of the MyStudies app with FDA branding appeared in the app stores when we used it for an initial FDA-sponsored observational study. We are now using it to support a clinical trial and registry, and it will carry the branding of the organizations involved. Today's webinar is intended to give you the tools to understand how you might adapt, rebrand, publish, and use the app for your own clinical trials and studies. I hope to see versions of the FDA My Study system with your branding appearing in the app stores in the future, and we are already aware of some movement in this direction in the private sector. I have a few disclosures to make. First of all, I received funding from the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Trust Fund, who believed in the vision even when smartphone use was substantially lower than it is today. I would also like to thank our clinical partners, Kaiser Permanente Washington Health Research Institute, the Childhood Arthritis and Rheumatology Research Alliance Registry, the LIMIT JIA trial, the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, and the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, who have helped us advance the development of the MyStudy system in clinical research practice. The views expressed in this slide set are those of the author and should not be construed as FDA views and policies, but these slides have been cleared through the appropriate chain at FDA. The mention of commercial products, their sources, or their use in connection with the material reported herein is not to be construed as either an actual or implied endorsement of such products by the Department of Health and Human Services. First, I'd like to talk about why we should consider mobile now. Clinical trials are critical to drug development because they provide defined populations from which rates can be calculated, so inferences can be made about drug effects. Most consumer-oriented health apps function more like spontaneous reports to a surveillance system from which rates cannot be calculated, or they lack connections to data sources that provide assurance that medically important events over a defined period of time are being systematically captured. FDA My Studies is designed to work within the clinical trial infrastructure. There are many activities some of which are represented in the large circle on this figure, necessary to run a successful trial, and many of these activities, such as laboratory testing, require face-to-face -face interaction with a patient. However, regulators, researchers, drug companies, and patients have long been interested in making clinical trials more efficient. The first trials were paper-based, but as time went by, telephone contact and then web-based contact were introduced to gather information between visits and to increase convenience for patients. However, smartphone use in the United States has increased dramatically over the last decade, and now 77% of U.S. adults own smartphones, which is up from 35% in 2011. At this point, fewer U.S. adults, 73%, own a laptop or desktop computer. In addition, there's been growth in smartphone-only Internet use, where 20% of U.S. adults do not rely on traditional home Internet service for access. There's also variation in this cord cutting or smartphone only behavior with reliance on smartphones for online access alone being especially common among adults under age 50, non-whites and lower income Americans. We believe it is now time to leverage the power of mobile technologies to support clinical trials. FDA My Studies has an informed consent module 
it can support patient recruitment through its gateway capabilities, and it can support the trial's engagement efforts while collecting data in a compliant manner. Some of you may be aware of the FDA's framework for its real-world evidence program, which covers drugs and biologics as well as real-world evidence guidance for medical devices. FDA's harmonized definitions for real-world data and real-world evidence are listed on this slide, and it is important to note that patient-generated data from digital sources, such as mobile devices, are considered a type of real-world data. The real-world evidence framework encourages evaluation and use of these technologies to fill potential gaps in other real-world data sources. In the real-world evidence space, we see substantial opportunity to use the mobile app in an analogous fashion to clinical trials. If you look at the box to the right on this slide, you can see that patients can be identified based on inclusion and exclusion criteria using real-world data sources including claims, electronic health records, real-world clinical trial electronic data capture systems, and registry electronic data capture systems. After patients authenticate into the app, they provide responses to questions, active task data, and with additional custom development, potentially data from connected devices, as well as participation metadata that can be linked to the previously mentioned real-world data sources. This allows the research team to have a defined cohort and to calculate rates, and it allows a minimally burdensome approach to the patient data collection through the app since all data does not need to be collected through the app. In the box on the left, you can see that the app can work with remote informed consent, but it can also be used in conjunction with direct face-to-face -face informed consent and subsequent authentication. Finally, while the system was designed to support clinical trials and studies, the app can still support so-called open studies, which are closer to the typical consumer health app model and have no true underlying cohort or specific prearranged authentication. Benefits that we see, particularly for the linked approach, include ongoing real-time data entry from patients, configurable questionnaires with secure data management so that the app can be positioned to support different therapeutic areas, more frequent touch points for real-world data collection since patients respond at their convenience, and automatic capture of contextual real-world metadata. And, and we have experienced uh, evidence of patients preferring the enhanced convenience and essentially answering questions in the app at nearly all hours of the day when it's convenient for them. And this may aid recruitment, engagement, and reten retention, particularly with the gateway functions of the app. So the FDA My Study system is more than an app. First and foremost, there is the patient-facing app, which is built on standard frameworks that software developers are familiar with, research kit for iOS systems, and research stack for Android operating systems. This necessitated some constraints in the early development process, but is actually a very useful thing to make the app something that can be modified by others. The web-based configuration portal enables the support of multiple types of medical product effectiveness and safety studies with minimal software development by giving the end user or researcher the ability to configure questions without specific software development. And finally, the secure storage environment functions to ensure that the system is compliant it generates secure tokens for patient authentication. It separates registration information and responses. And it is partitioned to support monthly site trials or decentralized trials or distributed real-world data models. Key system attributes include the fact that it is scalable, so you can simultaneously support multiple studies from one research organization. It's modular which allows various components of the platform to be integrated with third-party systems of choice to create tailored solutions. It's secure and has appropriate partitioning and access controls. It can be deployed to comply with HIPAA, FISMA, and 21 CFR Part 11 requirements. It's customizable 
and all study content can be authored and updated via the web configuration portal rather than through new software development per study or per app. It's also been tested by FDA and PCORI in sponsored clinical research demonstration projects. And finally, it's open source and ready for research organizations to rebrand, publish, and use. And furthermore, additional development ongoing in FDA research projects and demonstration projects will continue to update the open source functionality. I'd like to provide a little bit of extra regulatory context. Trials are intended to measure clinical benefit. And you can see in this review over an eight-year period that was conducted by the Office of Medical Policy, at the very bottom, that approximately 30% of new drug application trials included clinician-reported outcomes or patient-reported outcomes. Patient-reported outcomes are a subset of a larger family of clinical outcome assessments. There are clinician-reported outcomes, which are um, completed by a trained healthcare professional. There are patient-reported outcomes, which contain measurements based on reports that come directly from patients. And in some cases, there are observer-reported outcomes, where measurements are based on a report of observable signs, events, or behaviors, and maybe a different reporter other than the patient. And finally, there are performance outcomes, which are measurements based on a standardized task. And this may be independently completed by the individual in a structured manner. And digital health technology, including mobile and wearables, can be used to collect clinical outcomes. Here are some examples of outcomes in each category that you can review later. So how does the FDA review clinical outcome assessments? FDA evaluates an instrument in the context of its intended use. And this includes clinical trial design, the patient population, and the desired labeling claim. In other words, there's no such thing as instrument validation for all purposes. And I would encourage you to review the FDA PRO guidance, which has a hyperlink below, that describes good measurement principles applicable to all COA types. In the electronic PRO space, Sponsors must ensure that 21 CFR Part 11 requirements that pertain to information authenticity, integrity, and confidentiality are met. Also, every small change in application or format, for instance, converting from paper to electronic format, does not necessitate extensive studies to document the final version's measurement properties. Additional qualitative work may be adequate depending on the type of modification made and the context of its intended use. And these types of decisions are best made in conjunction with the FDA review divisions involved in the therapeutic area. Here is an example of a PRO question and subsequently its rendering in the app. I was at a cardiovascular clinical trials conference and in the morning I spoke to a cardiologist about a commonly used heart failure questionnaire and I had to speak about the app a few hours later, so I contacted Zach, who will speak to you next, and said, can we configure this just to demonstrate it to the audience? And here is the rendering in the app where you can see the overall instructions for the questionnaire, the instructions with the first question, and the response options. The app is also able to support informed consent. And FDA guidance on electronic informed consent does indicate that consent can be obtained by patients remotely. There needs to be an authentication method, and there must be a process to address the patient's questions, and there must be a suitable record that's provided to the patient, and the FDA needs to be able to inspect it. The system by design provides the suitable record to the patient, enables FDA inspection, and when combined with a research team, processes can be set up to address the patient's questions and have been done in our studies in the past. 20 and CFR Part 11 and mobile technology is covered in this guidance, and I would encourage you to review this since it does focus on authenticity, integrity, and confidentiality and includes mobile platforms. I'll mention that the recommendations apply to technology that is provided by the sponsor or owned by the study participant and while we initially conceived of the app being used on the participant's own device, 
the app could also potentially be used on a device which is supplied to the patient or other reporter. So how do you access the system? You'll see more about this today, but here is the FDA landing page and here are the links. The code and tech and technical documentation are now open source. Here is a picture of the GitHub repository. And now I'd like to turn it over to Zach Weiner who will demonstrate the functionality of the app systems. 